Well, this report looks at water security in Pakistan uh, and it primarily looks at the social, environmental and economic outcomes that Pakistan derives from its water. Uh, if you look at the report, we use a, a, a framework comprised of concentric circles with the innermost circle, the heart of our water security being the total water endowment. Of course, this natural endowment is managed by a combination of water sector institutions and water sector infrastructure. And they come together to manage this water endowment to deliver uh, water sector services, uh, to mitigate risks associated with uh, water such as uh, droughts and floods uh, and broader water resource management in the country. And we assess the performance of these areas through the outcomes that Pakistan's people, Pakistan's environment and Pakistan's economy have, uh, have either gained or lost for that matter. You see, it really depends on what, what metric you use. Uh, just in terms of whether everywhere water is needed at a particular time and a particular amount, is it always available? Uh, no, it's not. But that doesn't mean there isn't enough water within Pakistan's hydrological system or Pakistan's hydrological units to make that possible. So we see it very much as a problem of managing our water resources, uh, not an absolute shortage uh, in terms of the volume or the quantum of water that we get. There, there are many metrics that I'm sure you've you've heard being used, uh, water scarcity, which talks about water availability per person. Uh, it also, we'd also hear water stress, which is what fraction of our total renewable water supply are we withdrawing on a yearly basis. So yes, Pakistan uh, is, you can say there's an issue with water scarcity and an issue with water stress, but our report shows that neither of these are as severe as they're often thought to be. First of all, just uh, in terms of storage, we need to start thinking of storage in more ways than just mega dams. Right? So you look at our groundwater reserves, our aquifers as a potential source of storing water. Um, uh, we are blessed with glaciers which also help to buffer uh, variability of water supply between, uh, between years. Uh, so looking at storage as, at, as a more integrated function as opposed to just building mega dams uh, would be a good solution going forward. Well, in this report, uh, we have a list of uh, interventions or list of areas that Pakistan should invest in uh, to, 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 uh, to fix the water crisis. Uh, one of them is uh, in, 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 uh, building more dams and al also improving dam operations but we what we've done is we've organized them in a way that you can see what the impact of these interventions will be on the overall water sector uh, how complex these issues are and how urgently they are required and as you'll see in the report the circle which signifies the impact of building more dams and improving dam operations that impact is not the biggest amongst the possible interventions we can take. Uh, it is amongst the most complex, but it's at the same time not amongst the most urgent ones. So yes, in the long run, having more storage in the form of dams will improve system operations. It will help us buffer supply, uh, you know, storing some additional water during the part of the year where we have excess inflows to supply during times where there is a shortfall. But it won't solve the problem at the heart of our water crisis, uh, which is uh, poor, uh, poor management of our water endowment. Well, of the total water that's withdrawn from the system every year, about 94% goes to agriculture. So it stands to reason that m the most amount of wastage would also be in that, in, in that sector. Other than that, about 1% goes to industrial use and about 5% to municipal use. So agriculture, reforming agriculture in a way that our water productivity in agriculture increases, that our water use efficiency increases, uh, is really the key to managing our water resources water resources better. Currently, Pakistan has one of the lowest water productivities in the world, both for the agriculture sector and generally for economic productivity. Uh, and, and, and that needs to change very soon. The countries that are performing uh, poorly compared to Pakistan, economically speaking, uh, are six African countries that have severely underdeveloped irrigation 
uh, systems and are uh, mostly based on rain-fed agriculture. So Pakistan in that sense already has a head start in this in the sort of comprehensive irrigation and expansive irrigation infrastructure we have and the fact that we're not, uh, you know, our agricultural sector is not rainfall dependent, uh, is irrigation dependent. So, so, there's a, so the point is there's a lot more we could be getting from the water that we direct towards agriculture. About 80% of the water in agriculture goes towards four major crops. That's cotton, sugarcane, wheat, and rice. And these four crops collectively contribute less than 5% to Pakistan's GDP. And that's 80% of our, of our uh, withdrawn water. Uh, so, so clearly there's a, there's a mismatch. Uh, we often talk about Pakistan being an agrarian economy because about 20% of our GDP comes from agriculture. And the sort of imagery that 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 is uh, painted or sort of, sort of images that are painted are of these major crops being the lifeline of the country uh, but if you look at it um, in, in purely economic terms we're getting more from from livestock so uh, and, uh, and and less than five percent from these four major crops so in the long run we will slowly need to move away from these four major crops uh, the more water intensive of them are of course rice and sugarcane, which don't fetch us the sort of economic dividends we would want precious water to be getting for the country. So moving away from rice, uh, sugarcane, maybe reducing uh, wheat production to a certain extent, of course, not to compromise food security, but you know, we, we regularly produce these crops in excess. 50% of rice is exported. So that's valuable water being exported. So move, move away from uh, them and move towards higher value crops that give fetch us higher economic value for every drop of water we use uh, would need to be a part of the way forward. Yeah, I think uh, we as a nation in recent times definitely have been preoccupied with the amount of water available uh, and what has not been uh, scrutinized to the degree it ought to be is the quality of that water that we're getting and that we, we feel is, 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 a, uh, is, is a major uh, social and environmental cost that Pakistan has been paying. Uh, the cost of poor and inadequate water supply and sanitation and floods and droughts collectively is about 12 billion dollars every year to the Pakistan economy. The degradation of the Indus Delta uh, uh, also costs Pakistan between 1 and 2 billion dollars every year. So these are major economic costs that we are paying for not being able to manage our water quality. Some of this has to do with uh, wastewater recycling, uh, the infrastructure for which is grossly inadequate, uh, but then also uh, uh, making sure that drinking water that is supplied to rural and urban areas uh, is of an uh, adequate, appropriate quality.